apologize to anyone who made any sort of attention outside of mainstream media. Uh, he had been struggling for a while, and I mean, he struggled in the 2020 debates too, just not as much. And it was uh, a lot less noticeable then. But I, I say that to say this, and that's that Kamala Harris leading up to the debates continuously uh, supported Joe, never, like she, it was, it was a question that got asked a lot, you know, is, is he okay, you know, cognitively, and she always said no, she said, he's fine, you know, sharp as a tack, all this, which was also that that sentiment was also reflected by um, the mainstream media, specifically on on the left. Um, so, you know, it when it, it's just it's tough when like that sort of thing is right in front of your face for anyone who's paying attention. But the media and Kamala Harris are telling you something completely different. Um, they're telling you not to believe your eyes in your ears when he's talking. And that same media is the one, after Joe drops out, that same media is the one that's telling you that Kamala Harris is going to win, and it's not even going to be close, that, um, that she is the best candidate for the job, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, like, the media that already lied to you about Joe, like, I, I just, I don't know, man, they, like, and it's probably not fair for me to single it out on the left, I just, from what I can tell, it seems worse on the left, but obviously both sides do it, they, they want to get their candidate elected, um, you know, they have different ideologies that they want to see, uh, filtered into the government, and that's a way to kind of help do that, is to paint your candidate in the best picture, and the opposing candidate in the worst picture that you can, and it sucks that things are that way, uh, it really does, because that only helps to create more division, you know, like, I don't know, I, I would love to see, like, there was something that could be done about that, but then you get in. But I, I hate censorship, so then yeah, I can't <laughs> can't really do that. Okay. Anyway, okay. So Joe drops drops out of the race. Um, Kamala. They skip the entire Democratic primary process, which I don't know if they've ever done that before. I've never seen it, but obviously a very atypical situation, you know, Joe is dropping out relatively late, um, and then Kamala gets appointed, I guess, I don't really know how that happened, nobody voted for her, I know that, and especially when you, I mentioned the primaries back in 2020, because just to, like, emphasize, like, if they did have a primary, I'm not sure Kamala would have been picked coming out of that. She was not very likable. She had a very, I think, the lowest approval rating for a VP in history. So, um, not a great candidate. Wasn't appointed democratically. Um, you know, they kind of skipped that part. And then, yeah, I mean, during her, during her campaign process, I didn't really hear a lot of, a lot of, like, actual policies from her. Like, the main policies that I heard were that they were running on joy, uh, were not going back, abortion. And Donald Trump sucks. And that's it. That's really about it, which um, I'll put some graphs up on the screen here with 
the mortgage rates and inflation rates over the past 10 years or so. But when the economy is in the shape that it has been over the past four or five years, and you're not really talking about any sort of policy to address that, uh, that that's an issue. Uh, you know, I think I think most of us could feel the impacts of the uh, current economic conditions over the past four years. You know, it's it's pretty clear uh, the, the difference between grocery prices now versus when Trump was in office, the gas prices now versus when Trump was in office. The the interest rates now versus when Trump was, was in office. Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, could have been campaigned on that just weren't. Um, so, yeah, I think it was, a lot of it was a, a lack of policy. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think a lot of it was being very reliant on these celebrity and Endorsements. Uh, I mean, like, seriously, does anybody not to single the guy out? I love LeBron, but does anybody really care, uh, like, who he's voting for? Do we really think that he has to worry about putting food on the table, that he has to worry about paying his mortgage? Does he even fill up his own car with gas? The dude is worth a billion dollars, and a lot of these other celebrities that endorse her, they, they just, they don't really live in the same world that the rest of us do, where, you know, like, you can be making good money and just not even being close to being able to afford a house, which is something that my wife and I were experiencing over the past four years, and, you know, that is a, a direct reflection of the, the current economic climate, which people would love to, to hear some, some feedback on, some ideas to kind of propel things forward, um, you know, whether they're good ideas or bad ideas, that's, that's one thing, but no ideas is another, uh, you know, no policies or anything, and that also makes me, it, it reminds me of, there was a, an, an interview that she did on The View, I think at this point it was probably four to six weeks ago, um, she was asked if there was anything she would have done differently, uh, during the Biden-Harris administration. She said no, she couldn't think of a single one, not a single thing that she would have done differently. And, like, I don't, I don't know, I just, I, I genuinely do not believe she has any unique political perspective. Um, I don't think she has any, like, serious policies that she really believes in, just based on those responses. And I think that made it really, really difficult for voters to connect with her. Um, and, you know, like, the interviews with her, like, she would just kind of, like, word salad her way around answers, you know, everything would begin with like, I'm from a middle-class family, or, you know, I, I know, I understand, thank you for asking that question, and I'm so thankful to be here, and then just nothing of substance after that, um, so you, you got people with a lot of questions who just aren't getting any answers, it's hard to grow your voter base like that, um, so I think, I think that played a big factor, and I think, uh, honestly, I, I, th I think the, the media, um, specifically, like, the media on, on the left, mainstream media, because, you know, I think in general, independent media is 
is a lot better. They're not captured by, you know, these major organizations that are directing, like, what they can and cannot say. Um, but, like, the left-wing media, like, they, I think they played a, a big part of this because they made it so much more about identity politics than really anything else. Um, they made it to where, like, if you vote for Trump, you're, you're racist, misogynist, fascist, all these things, which, based on what they, they want you to think that if you don't vote for the female person of color, that you're a racist or a misogynist. And that's just, people are tired of hearing that. I could not care less, you know, what your gender, what your color is, I, your ethnicity, your background, I don't care. I want the best person for the job. So if that's like your reasoning for why you're the best person for the job, that's not going to do it for me. If your most unique characteristic is your skin color or, you know, your upbringing or whatever, then that's not something I'm really interested in. And I think a lot of people felt that. And then on top of that, um, I remember a point during the debate where Kamala Harris again, I, I, I can't even tell you how many times this has been quoted misquoted, I should say, the whole very fine people on both sides quote, and if you still think he really said that, then you're in, you're in deep, and you've been lied to for a long time, uh, because that's been debunked so many times, they, they quoted it about the, the Charlottesville in incident, and during that same speech where he said very fine people on both sides, he was talking about the legitimate protesters that were there to protest the statue being torn down, which is totally fine. And he also condemned the white nationalists and the white supremacists or whatever it was. He condemned them in the same speech. But they pulled that sentence out. They brought it up at the debate. And this, hap this incident happened like six years ago, probably. But the fact that she's willing to bring that up during the debate, I mean, like, she's... You're basically telling, like, telling or counting on your voter base to be ignorant, just completely ignorant. And, like, I, it's just such a crazy thing to say because... Anybody who has done any sort of research already knows that's that was a, a BS, like, taken out of context. Um, but so when I heard that, it was, it, it was almost like her just, like, calling her supporters dumb. Like, because, I mean, like, it's, it's not true and you're still, like, trying to feed this lie and it's just, it's, it was really frustrating to see and then I saw like Obama brought it up um, maybe like a couple days before the election he brought up the very fine people on both sides thing which I don't know it's just it's such a slap in the face to your voters to think they have no access to information outside of what you tell them to be true it's insane like the expectation was to just be blindly followed, I guess. Um, sorry, that got that got a little a little too much, I think. But that that comment really bothered me, just because it's just not true, and I just I, I can't I can't stand when. 
watch a lot of um, like CNN and MSNBC and stuff after the election. I just wanted to see like their perspective uh, and see why they thought they lost, which is something I would I would recommend to people out there. Um, you know, it's it's important to take in uh, multiple perspectives when you know considering things, uh, especially things that are very important to you, but, um, but immediately after the election, uh, a couple of these shows were talking about how they need to do something to, to censor these social media companies and what they're allowed to say, which is hilarious. Um, it, I mean, it's like, it's such a weird grasp for power to kind of like, like they're, they're like slipping away and they're just, it's like the last grasp to try to hang on and be the ultimate like provider of truth to people. Like if I were in their shoes, I would probably want to censor social media too because then people rely on me for news. Well, that's good for me. And then if they have nobody else to give them a different perspective, then they're going to believe what I say. Uh, there's nobody to challenge them. So why would they, why would they think differently? So anyway, yeah, I, th I think censorship was also a, uh, a big part. Um, in this campaign because also um, both Harris and her running mate Walls, they talked about censoring um, misinformation and disinformation online or, or I can't remember exactly what they said. Maybe it was, mm, I can't remember, just I, th I think it was maybe they didn't want people to have First amend Amendment protection for misinformation and disinformation. But then you gotta wonder, like, who who decides what is misinformation or disinformation then? Like, the government, the news companies, like, who, who decides? Um, so, can't have it, can't have it. Um, you know, freedom of speech is supposed to protect the speech that you don't like. And that, that's why it's so important. Uh, you have to be able to say what you think, regardless of whether people agree or disagree. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. Uh, if you don't have that, then you really don't have much. So, anyway. Um, I, I think that's about it. I've been rambling for a while, but I would love to hear y'all's thoughts. Uh, and yeah, let me know if you guys want to hear more or see more videos like this. Um, I can make more about the election. Today I was just talking about why Kamala lost or why I think she lost. But maybe next time we can jump into why, why Trump won. That would be uh, uh, a little bit different. Um, but yeah, let me know. Anyway. Hopefully, hopefully y'all didn't hate it too much. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was relaxing. And if you did like it, make sure, oh my goodness, my eyes. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more. And I will see you all next time.